Luther versus Mayel. None can escape my fury. I will fight with honor. All right, so my best guess is he's probably odd rogue. So I'm a big fan of the two drop that doesn't die to his hero power. But I do need something for turn three. I guess I'll keep the dragon. We have turned our curse into our strength. None will survive. Looks like my guess was right. Let's go for Imani Berserker because this two drop dies to his hero power. Ha, this guy's a toast. Really? Is that better than hero powering? Quite skeptical. Well, I'll just play a fairy dragon here. I guess he's gonna hero power on turn three instead of turn two. So do I want to play my 3-4 to get the weapon discount, or just go ahead and weapon here? I think I like the 3-4. He lines up well enough into this board. And it lets me just play more stuff over the next two turns. Alright, that was powerful. But I can still weapon to kill this guy. That's what's important here. No dragon, unfortunately. That would be a really strong card here. For I think I will play the juggler. The juggle hitting here doesn't really do much. Well, I guess this is a good juggle actually, because he's going to hero power into the juggler. Then the 1-1 one, one would contest. But this is fine, I can just true silver into this next turn. Man, Tar Creeper is good against True Silver Champion. Show me a Consecration. Well, I guess if he's trading off the SI7 agent, I don't need it that bad. It'd still be good, though. Good pickup. Do I want to play a 2-2? I guess I could also just equality here to deal with the Tar Creeper. Pretty annoying. Holding it's only good if I draw exactly Consecration. Maybe the Knife Juggler. But how often is it doing more than 6 damage? Well, 7. I guess it dealt damage to this guy too. Hopefully he doesn't have a Vile Spine Slayer. Of course I draw the Consecration the turn after I play the Equality. It's probably still going to be pretty good this game though. Oh shit. No Vile Spine. Trade that off just to play around Consecration, I guess. Man, I want to slam Blessing of Kings on this and hit him in the head for 12. That seems like a hot play. I could also just go, like, Consecration, Obliterate. I'll just have a 1-1. One, one. I'll still be at 12. I get to push the 8. I, wonder. I think I like that a little bit better, actually. It's a similar amount of protection for my Lich King. And 
And I still have the Blessing of Kings, so he has to kill Lich King and the 2 2. Or set up a taunt. Okay, looks like he found the Vile Spine. But I've got an army of the dead. And it's pretty likely to give me something good here. But to be fair, if it misses, I'm probably dead. Ooh, Sunkeeper Terum. Good. So, he hero powers into Terum. This guy clears it. He needs 9 damage. Could be Leroy Coldblood. So I could play Blessing of Kings on this to play around exactly Leroy Coldblood. If any of these live, I have lethal just straight up or with Consecration. Um, I don't have any plays that beat like a Silence. It doesn't beat Vile Spine Slayer plus damage. But it does beat exactly Leroy Coldblood. Alright, so he sends both of his guys in, and then I just have Lethal on board. Nice. That one was actually pretty close. Alright, keep the two drop, toss the others. So I'm looking for another 2-drop for turn 3. We have turned our curse Even Warlock. Seems to be the new popular deck. Found a Twilight Drake. Probably just gonna end up playing it as a 4-5 on turn 4. I did find another 2-drop, that's good. Um, let's start with the Mani Berserker. I think this deck plays Drain Soul, so I don't want him to just be able to shoot the Juggler. Although if he did shoot the Juggler, then he uh, wouldn't be able to play Mountain Giant on 3. But whatever, this is fine. The file, sure. So Dragon or 4-3 Divine Shield. The Drake obviously enables some synergies in my deck. If a Mountain Giant's coming down this turn, I can put a Blessing of Kings on the Glass Knight and then get a really sick trade. They do the same amount of damage, so I guess I'm just going to play this guy. Alright, he did have the Giant. So I think I like the Blessing of Kings here. He still has his coin, right? So he could have coin siphon soul if I tried to just go face. I'm not super familiar with this list, so I don't know what I should necessarily be playing around. He could also just coin out like Rin, and he would just have a taunt so I wouldn't be able to get in there. Even if I get to hit him twice, he's still at five. It's not like I have a way to kill him. Alright, let's not get coin siphon sold. I mean, he can still coin siphon soul me, but obviously this way his mountain giant's dead. Coin dread infernal. Okay. Slam another kings on it. You'd probably siphon soul there over the dread infernal, I think. This guy's AoE effect is really good against one ones. He only hit one there. What do I open myself up to if he only needs four damage to kill this? He's even, so it can't be like Shadow Bolt. Could be a Spellstone, which would be upgraded since he just played this guy. So maybe I should just go like Twilight Drake Hero Power. Let if I put the Blessing of Kings on this, this does at least force this guy to trade in if he has a Spellstone. Um, I think he's only upgraded it once though, even if he has it. I think I'm just going to play Gen here. If I play Twilight Drake, he can get a pretty good value trade. He has some way to deal with my Glass Knight. Like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Siphon Soul, but I'm not 100%. And like I said, just generally, I'm not really that familiar with this list. Alright, he had to take the trade. Can he deal with Gen? Hellfire Drain Soul. Okay. So he would have had an answer to the Blessing of Kings play. Oh, 
All right, let's just play some stuff out. I'm threatening lethal with the Blessing of Kings, but I'm sure at least something on my board is going to die or he's going to play a taunt. If I hit a juggle on that, it's really good to put the Kings on the Divine Shield. But if I don't hit the juggle, maybe it's not so bad to just put it on the Twilight Drake. It'd be an 8-9. It would go down to 2 health, which is pretty low. But I've seen two AoEs. Can't be playing Godfrey. And I've got a taunt in the way of the Plated Beetle, so maybe that wouldn't be too bad. Do I want to ever go, like, Dragonsmith True Silver Champion here? I guess that would let me use Weapon, Divine Shield, and just the 1-1. One -one. I kind of like the Divine Shield, though. Protects my guy from the Beetle if I'm not buffing it. So I think I'm just going to go Blessing of Kings. If I hit the juggle where I want it to go, I'll put this on the Divine Shield. If not, I'll just put it on the Twilight Drake. So, face or beetle. Hitting into the beetle doesn't really seem like it plays around anything. Defile, Hellfire. I'm gonna hit him in the face, because it plays around him having two more health. Looks like he drew what he needed. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so True Silver into the 2 4. Yeah, I have Lethal with the Juggle. Had one over. And maybe I could have been a little bit more efficient on the Hook Driver. Could have been like two over. Got him, though. Alright, let's just keep the 2-drop. We have turned our curse into our strength. Is someone injured? Let's coin out the fairy dragon because it doesn't give him a free draw. Um, let's just play another fairy dragon. Sure. Seems good. So the question is, do I play the knife juggler here? And the reason not to is because of Duskbreaker. If he Duskbreakers, I play this. Lines up pretty well into it, discounts my weapon. But then my turn 5 is looking pretty dead with this hand, although I do have 2 draws to hit something. And the majority of my deck is 2 and 4 drops. It's fairly likely I would hit something. Let's just go for it. For they don't always have the Duskbreaker. And honestly, without, like, Nether Spite Historian and stuff, they don't always have the activator for the Duskbreaker. It's a bummer. Last night's pretty cool. Um, which one's better here? 3-4 or the 4-3 Divine Shield? If I play the Glass Knight here, I'm basically obligated to play this guy next turn, because I want to be able to play this on 6. Mm. I mean, I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing. Let's just play this guy. I think they pretty much die to, like, the same stuff. Pyromancer, second Duskbreaker. Okay, this is actually better in the Master Spell. Good job, me. Seems like a pretty straightforward turn. Maybe an argument for going face instead of trading, but it seemed like a really good trade. And I want as much of my stuff to survive the turn as possible because this boy's coming down next turn. Damn, two master spells. But you know what master spell doesn't do? It doesn't clear my board.
Do I want to just play Terum here? Spends a lot of my mana. This seems like it's probably just a Mind Blast list. They don't really have too much stuff that needs to be Terumed. So let's just Terum. Get two four power things in play. If he wants to play Anduin here, he's just gonna die. Alright. Now we'll just go for Lich King. Could also just opt for uh, Scale Worm, Amani, and Hero Power. Get some weapon value. Set him to 5. He plays Anduin, goes up to 10. Scale Worm dies. Then I play the second Silver Sword. He dies. That's cool. I think I actually like the play that kills him if he plays Anduin. Oh wait, I don't even have to play the second Silver Sword. This one still has a charge on it. But yeah, still kills him through Anduin. And it's not like this play is even worse against like Duskbreaker or anything. Hmm. He's played both Screams, right? The first one was not off Shadow Visions because a Master Spell was. Oh, so this guy just plays two Master Spells. Well, he died. That's what he gets for playing double Master Spell. I've only done two videos for this deck, but I think I'm going to leave it at that. The deck definitely does some cool stuff with its dragon synergies, but a lot of the core functionality of the deck is just even Paladin, something we've seen before, so I think a two-parter is enough. But I do think there's some chance that this could be the face of even Paladin going forward. The Dragonsmith into Silver Sword combo is actually ridiculously powerful. There's still the issue that people are still playing their Oozes and Harrison Jones, but if Q-Block falls off the way people are predicting, and then maybe if Paladin falls off a little bit more, then the Weapon Hate should fall out of the meta and Silver Sword becomes more appealing. I was pretty lucky that in my 19 games, this card never got oozed, but it's definitely scary when you spend 8 mana on something that dies to a 2 mana card's battle cry. The other powerful thing in the deck, obviously, is the Cathedral Gargoyle. I didn't draw this card on turn 2 as often as I would have liked, but the games where I did draw it on turn 2, it was extremely powerful. And honestly, you don't have to give up that much as far as deck building goes to support this card. So I think Dragon Even Paladin might just be the Even Paladin. I kind of liked this deck. I ended up going 13-6 and six with this list, but obviously take that with a grain of salt in the first couple days after a major balance change. And surprisingly, the deck I was losing to the most was Odd Rogue. Out of my six losses, I think three of them were to Odd Rogue, and then another one was to Miracle Rogue. Seems like you just don't outpace them as quick as you used to without Call to Arms in the list, which I guess is fairly predictable. Call to Arms is a pretty strong card. Aside from the Rogue matchup, though, I was feeling pretty good about most of the other stuff I was queuing into. I did end up making a few changes to the deck, though. I was playing two Primordial Drakes originally, ended up cutting them for Twilight Drakes. I didn't play that many games with the Primordial Drakes in the deck, 10 or 12 maybe, and there were multiple instances where on turn 8 it was like my only play, but if I played it, it killed my own board. It just doesn't fit that well in the deck, so I don't think I like the Primordial Drake too much. Um, I'm not in love with Twilight Drake either, but you can pretty often just play it as a 4-mana four 4-5, four that's not too bad. And I even added a little bit more synergy with the Twilight Drake with two Dragold Jailers. They put more stuff in your hand, makes your Twilight Drakes bigger, seems okay. Not really sure if the Dragold Jailer is worth it, I think this card is pretty weak honestly. But it does have some additional synergy with the Knife Juggler, it gives you some 1-1s to spam with either Sunkeeper Tarim or Silver Sword, and it sometimes just helps you fill out your curve a little bit. I'm not sure I love it, but it does have quite a bit of synergy with the deck. Most of the list I'm pretty happy with. Um, I think there's still quite a bit of room to just play around with the two drops. Do you want two Amanis? Do you want the Dry Gulch Jailers at all? I'm still not sold on Knife Juggler. Plated Beetle is still a consideration. Argent Protector, Hydrologist. There's a lot of fairly mediocre two drops that could make their way into this deck. But most of the stuff above that I'm pretty happy with. I guess Glass Knight's kind of a filler card. Deathwing is a little bit questionable. But I went 13-6 and six with this deck, so it's definitely capable of winning some games.